Okay, everyone, now that I've talked to you a little bit about um, taking natural portraits, we are going to take a portrait and make it a little bit unnatural, hopefully for the better. On the Google Drive folder, scroll down until you find the egsfixsession.psd. That's a Photoshop file that we're going to be working on. Download that to your computer and then open it up in Photoshop. You may notice that I have a green ring around my mouse. That's just to make it easier for you guys to see. It is not an actual feature of Photoshop. So here's our portrait, standard corporate headshot. And it was taken on a day that our friend here was not planning on having her portrait taken. And so she was a little disappointed in the outcome. So we are going to try to improve it for her. Now, uh, things can get a little touchy when we're talking about improving photos of people, uh, especially when we're talking about body image and things like that. So I'm going to try to keep things uh, fairly neutral here. So we have our background layer. We're going to keep that. As always, I like to duplicate it uh, just for safety. And now we're going to go through and make some changes. And the most major changes we're going to make uh, are going to happen to the actual photograph itself. That's why I duplicated the layer. And uh, so we're going to start those first and then make additional changes on top of those. So um, the most powerful tool for retouching in Photoshop is known as the liquify tool. So if you come up to filter, the filter menu, and you pull down, you'll find the liquify tool. Before we get into the liquify tool, I'm going to come over and I'm going to twirl up the face aware liquify. This is a really good tool and I'm going to go into how to use it, but I want to teach you the original uh, tools of liquify first uh, that are a little less automatic. So up here we have the forward warp tool, the reconstruct tool, the smoothing tool, the clockwise twirl, pucker and bloat tool, and the freeze mask and thaw mask tools. These are the most important tools uh, that you will come across in liquify and the ones that I want to go over for their use. So for starters, I'm going to show you the forward warp here on her necklace, and it's pretty straightforward. If you click and push, it's going to go in the direction that your mouse goes and warp it. Uh, you can use the reconstruct tool to undo what you've done uh, or fine tune it a little bit. In this case, I'm probably just going to undo uh, my actions as opposed to. I'm going to show you the twirl clockwise tool. If you just click and hold, it will start to rotate clockwise, whatever you're clicking and holding on. Now let's do a real, more real world example here. Her eye looks a little crooked to me. Her cheek has kind of pushed it up. And so I would use the clockwise twirl to kind of rotate it and bring it more in line with the other eye and its orientation. You can option click on the clockwise tool and make it a counterclockwise rotation as well. Now we come to the pucker tool, which is a funny sounding term for it, but uh, this is going to make things smaller. So in the case of her necklace, we're going to make her uh, more and more thrifty. And the counterpoint is the bloat tool in which we can make it more and more blingy. But notice that because of my brush size, the area around it is also getting bloated. You want to be careful to keep your brush size under control when you're using pucker or bloat. Now I'm going to talk about the freeze mask tool. And this is basically just a tool that uh, you select what part of the picture you want to lock in, like her eye here. It's going to paint a red mask. This is not actual paint. That is the part of the image that will now be locked in and not changed. And if I use another tool like the clockwise warp, you'll notice that everything not in that red mask is going to be changed. So if you ever need to lock something down, that is what the freeze tool, mask tool is for. And to deselect the freeze mask, you can come over to the mask options menu and choose none, and that will make the mask go away. The alternative is the thaw tool underneath the freeze mask tool uh, over on the toolbar side of things. So as promised, now that we know the basic tools and how you use them and why you use them, 
uh, we're going to check in on the content aware liquify the face aware liquify tool and you'll see by those two white lines around her head that Adobe has identified her face so we have the common points of adjustment eyes nose mouth and these lock links in the middle make it so that you can adjust things equally if need be for instance both eyes at the same time so what you want to do is click on that lock link otherwise what you'll have is only one eye at a time being adjusted so here is me clicking on the link which establishes them at the same value and you can see these adjustments are subtle which is good so I'm just gonna go through the tools and give little tweaks here and there based on what I've already talked about which is big eyes are seen as preferable smaller noses smaller chins uh, these are the kinds of things that I would work on with these settings. Um, I don't think there's too much needed uh, in terms of restructuring her face, but I'm going to go ahead and make a few adjustments here, and I'll do it in speedy time for you guys. So now that we're out of liquify, we have our adjusted photo layer uh, and our original, which is locked at the bottom, and I'm going to keep that that way. Uh, so from here on out, I'm going to be working on top of this adjusted liquefied video or photo layer with the reconstruction changes that we've made. We're going to start off with our friend the spot healing brush and just go through and remove uh, any blemishes we see that seem temporary. Uh, I would not remove freckles and things like that, um, but I'm just looking for things that, of course, we would rather not have present. So the spot healing brush is really great for this. I'm going to use, use the blur tool here just to uh, knock down some of the pores. Uh, there's a lot of detail in this shot that we don't necessarily need, uh, and I'll use these different tools accordingly. Here I've made a mistake with the healing brush, so I'm going to clear that right up as well. All right, so one of the most distracting things I see in this image is actually the shiny areas. Um, where there's a little bit of overexposure. So if I play with the exposure here, you can see that those areas just have no detail left in them. So uh, what I'm gonna do is kind of an old school technique, which is apply a makeup layer. So for starters, I need to select um, a skin tone. So I'm gonna grab the eyedropper tool here. It doesn't really matter what part of her face it comes from, it just has to be close. And then I'm going to fill that new layer with the skin tone that I just selected. So now I have a makeup layer. Again, it doesn't really matter if it's an exact match to her skin at this point. So I'm going to invert that layer, and then I'm going to paint in the makeup very carefully. Is we're going to come in with our white paintbrush into our mask, and what we want to do is be careful. We're going to go and get our paintbrush. And we want to be careful that we're not using it at full opacity. I'm going to pick a brush size that works for me. You can do that in the menu up here, or I'm doing it with the control option keys held and then scrolling right to left. And then when I have a brush size I'm happy with, I'm just going to go and gently paint that in. And that's actually probably as far as I would want to go. I wouldn't want to build that up too much more. I'm going to do it on her cheeks as well. Just those really shiny spots. We don't want anything competing with her eyes. We want them to be the shiniest thing in the picture. You could also play around with blending mode. We're not going to want to do a lighten, actually. We're going to want to do something in the darker menu. Um, but you'll see that that's starting to feel a little paint-y. So I'm probably going to stick uh, with normal. Or that darken seems to be doing about the same thing. 
you decide. Um, but I'm pretty happy with where it is, so I'm going to call that it in terms of our makeup layer. Uh, moving right along, uh, I see two other things that I would probably want to fix. Um, teeth are important, and the lips that go along with them are important. So let's zoom in here and really focus on teeth. Now, the trick that I've done for a long, long time, there's all kinds of tricks to whitening teeth, uh, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to add an adjustment layer, and I'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer, which sounds kind of funny, but I'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer. This gives me uh, a lot of control, and teeth tend to be kind of yellow, so I'm actually going to uh, play with the yellows, and in the black and white mode. And what I can do is I can actually use that yellow color in the teeth to actually make them brighter, uh, surprisingly. Normally we don't think of yellow in the teeth as a good thing, but it's kind of a handle for me. So I'm just gonna start there. I'm gonna turn my mask black to make it go away. And then what I'm gonna do again is paint in with a paintbrush, a white paintbrush. And what I want to do is be very careful. So again, low opacity, just build this up. And you want to be kind of careful to not be painting in a black and white effect on the lips. So we're just going to try to avoid the gums and all of that. Remember, you can always check your mask by holding down the option key and clicking on the mask. And we'll see that we're kind of getting filled in here. I'm going to hold option and click back. And now what I can do is I can play around with those black and white settings again. And you can see we can go from kind of grayish to more white. Again, I don't want to do too much here. Um, it's maybe a little bit greenish still, so I might add in a little bit more into my mask. Uh, again, I'm building up. Up here's the opacity, and I'm just building up that black and white. If it were full opacity, we'd be looking at bright white, fake-looking teeth. So you want to go gently. And if for some reason you did go too far, you could always adjust the whole effect that you did. Let's step back and see what we're talking about here. Uh, it still looks mostly natural, but you could come back and change the opacity of that whole adjustment layer to get back to full normal. Teeth accomplished. Uh, let's talk about the lips real quick. I think they just kind of disappear a little bit. So all I would do is do a uh, hue and saturation because there is a lightness uh, effect that can be done through that. So what I'm gonna do is um, I could do the entire uh, color range or I could select just the magentas and reds, which is where the lips are. I do think I'm going to do the entire color range because there's some yellow and other stuff in there, and I don't want to uh, miss out on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go crazy with this for starters, just so I can see what I'm doing. And we can see that pretty quickly those lips are going to start to look fake, so I just want to be careful about that. And as always, turn the mask off, command invert, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to paint that crazy color in. And then once it's painted in, I will have the opportunity to adjust it. And then I usually need to kind of take a step back see what we're doing. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I promised that we were going to undo some photography things, but first what I want to do is just clean up um, the hair flyaways. So um, in our photo layer, we can't do this to the adjustment layers, but in our photo layer, what we want to do is um, actually just kind of clone these out with the basic clone tool. Uh, we could also, if you wanted a little bit more control, if you were concerned about needing to go back and fix things, you could duplicate this layer. I'm going to drag it down to the new layer, and I'll just call this flyaways. And the 
And what we're going to do here is we're going to use a mask um, to kind of make the changes, uh, but then we will have the ability to turn that on and off. So here's what I'm talking about. So for the flyaways layer, what we're going to do is we are going to grab our clone stamp and just grab big patches of this. And so now I've made this kind of mess of things, but I'm going to dial it back a little bit. Okay, and so now I'm just going to take my white paintbrush and an actual paintbrush, get a good size, and I'm going to paint back in from this cloned layer. So I can probably go stronger in the opacity here and just kind of copy in from that layer. And the only reason I did it this way, as opposed to just using the clone stamp on the original image, is to give you guys a sense of if you wanted to have a little bit more control in the long run, this is how you would do it. Otherwise, you could just go in there and clone these out one by one individually. But again, with the mask, we then don't have to be quite as precise. And you can see where those clone lines are coming in. So we do have to be careful there. So I'm going to go to my black paintbrush and just paint out those lines from the cloning process and try to get it to look as similar to the background as possible. All right. Uh, it's not perfect. It looks like there's a little line there, but for now, we'll call that it. Okay, and then lastly, I said we were going to do some things with the lighting. Um, I noticed that... Um, the photographer was trying for a backlight but didn't get one that was particularly strong or noticeable. So one thing we might do is actually add in a backlight of our own. So one thing that I would do there is I would add yet another adjustment layer. And this time it's just going to be a brightness and contrast layer. And so I'm going to see what happens when I make it a little crazy and pretend that there was more light on the subject. And then what we'll do is, as always, we will paint this in. This time I will turn down the opacity so that I can kind of build up. But we're going to see here, and then we will kind of paint in on her shoulders that nice rim light that the photographer was kind of trying to go for. And then also on her hair that sense of kind of a backlight coming in and I would do it stronger on this side since it's clear that's where the photographer's light was coming from one thing we might want to do is um, on the original photo layer itself we might want to go in her hair looks a little kind of crispy so we might go in with a smoothing tool or a uh, the blur tool and just kind of just do a little smoothing on the hair just so it's not quite so detailed. We'll let her face stand out a little bit more than her hair. But as always, go easy on this. Okay. And so lastly, I said we were going to adjust the color a little bit. We'll do an adjustment, hue and saturation. Let's move it to the top of the stack. And maybe a little lightning, and then we will call that it. So there, I'm pleased with how this has worked out. Hopefully you guys are. Hopefully you guys had fun doing it. That is our photo retouching 